part two of the two neuroimaging clips that I've done and again we're going to describe how the functional neuroimage gathers its neurological information. We're going to look at advantages and we're going to look at disadvantages in this clip and we'll start with the SPECT. So important to emphasize that the SPECT provides not only structural information but also functional information by using a radioisotope to act as a tracer this is injected into the bloodstream so that when the patient is performing a cognitive task the brain areas that require more oxygenated blood are assumed to be engaged in high levels of cognitive activity the computer identifies these areas based on the high concentration of the radioisotope, thus providing a 3D functional image identifying the actual brain areas required in the completion of a cognitive task such as speech. In terms of the benefits, as opposed to a CT or an MRI which merely provides structural information, the SPECT provides structural and functional information. And although it lacks the clarity of a PET scan, it's often used in conjunction with a CT scan to detect and pinpoint brain abnormalities. So in such a case, the CT would provide the detail in terms of the structural information, while a SPECT provides the functional information. In terms of the actual use of it, it takes longer for the body to metabolize or absorb the radioisotope. So therefore, it can be used for longer sessions and more regularly than a PET scan. A limitation of it though is it provides a lower resolution image in comparison to a PET and certainly an fMRI. Moving on to the PET scan. So the PET scan provides us with the structural and functional information key point by utilizing a harmless radioactive substance, usually glucose, which is injected into the bloodstream, providing a colored map of the brain at work. So the radioactive signals emitted by the tracer are tracked and processed by a PET computer when doing a cognitive task, which for instance might involve speech. And it is assumed that the brain areas that have an increased blood flow are responsible for that neural or cognitive task. In terms of the benefits of the PET scan, well it provides functional information as opposed to the CT or MRI which merely provides us with structural information. It provides a more detailed functional image in comparison to a SPECT. The colour coding makes it easy to interpret by clearly identifying areas that are high in activity when completing a cognitive task as well as areas that have reduced activity when completing a cognitive task which therefore might indicate some brain abnormalities. In terms of limitations, it is less detailed than an MRI and an fMRI so it's often used in conjunction with an MRI when we want to pinpoint some of those structural abnormalities. It produces an image only once every 40 seconds so it doesn't show the rapid brain interaction as opposed to an fMRI and because of the actual radioactive substance there is a limit to the number of PET scans that one can have and also the actual radioactive tracer is actually metabolized or absorbed by the body rather quickly so sessions tend to be rather short in comparison to a SPECT which can have actually longer sessions and more frequent sessions. So finally, the functional MRI, which again, as opposed to an MRI, provides us with both structural and functional information by detecting subtle changes in oxygen levels in blood flow through the brain when completing cognitive tasks. There are two major advantages of the fMRI in comparison to the two functional alternatives, the PET and the SPECT. Firstly, it provides information on the rapid brain interaction that occurs from moment to moment by taking numerous pictures of the brain in rapid succession. Secondly, it provides a more 
detailed functional image of the brain in comparison to a SPECT or a PET. And a third advantage in comparison to a PET scan is there's no exposure to radiation. A limitation of the fMRI is again it can't be used on people with internal metallic devices whether it be a pacemaker in their heart, a steel plate in their head or some other part of their body because of the magnetic pulses. And this is, um, you could apply this to any of the functional devices but basically researchers need to be aware that observed differences in brain activation could be associated with other variables such as the duration of the task etc so therefore we need to be very careful in making cause and effect statements there might be other variables that come into play